give me a chord. Give... If I could have your attention, I'd like to reintroduce you to the president of the Landmarks Conservatory, Peg Green. Thank you. We're about to meet tonight's honorees, but a couple of things first. If you wondered why your desserts had the number 50 on them, it's because I forgot to tell you at the beginning of the program that it's the 50th anniversary of the city's landmarks law, and we're celebrating that here tonight. <laughs> and I trust you've figured out by now that the centerpieces on your table are landmarks, and they're by artist Steve Lohman. And it's everything from St. Patrick's Cathedral to the Flatiron, the Empire State Building, Chrysler Building, Patience and Prudence from the Public Library, the Brooklyn Bridge, and the Washington Square Arch. The artist has signed them, and someone at every table is welcome to take them home. <clears throat> oh. And now, <clears throat> it's time to meet our honorees and our host for the evening. We're delighted to have Paul Binder with us to MC. Paul, of course, is the co-founder of the Big Apple Circus and a living landmark. When Paul and his Big Apple partner, Michael Christensen, became landmarks in 2000, they brought the house down. They showed off their juggling skills, and then they did a mean Blues Brothers imitation, complete with Grandma the Clown. In his years as ringmaster, Paul introduced world-class performers, trapeze artists, animal trainers, contortionists, jugglers, who thrilled the crowds with their unique talents. So what better background for introducing some of our most talented New Yorkers? Please welcome Paul Binder. <laughs> Thank you, Peg. Ah, oh, well, all these years, the great Liz Smith has been the MC of this event. So Peter and I thought we'd uh, begin with a little song. Here's to you, Liz. New York, New York, it's a landmark town. I don't look as good as Liz in a gown. Great honor. New York, New York, it's a landmark town. Well, sometimes I'm on key. Anyway, I'm delighted to be hosting tonight. As Peg said, I am a living landmark, which is better than the alternative. And this simply is the best party in town. The seats, you, all of you fill the seats uh, and who are lovers of this great city of ours. Tonight, I'll have help with introductions by some very special guest presenters. I am delighted to be joined by Joel Gray, Bernadette Peters, and, go ahead, you, that's okay, go ahead. And get ready for this one, folks. Timothy Cardinal Dolan. The Cardinal has just overseen an incredible restoration of one of our most beloved landmarks, St. Patrick's Cathedral. And our first honoree has been instrumental in the multi-year, multi-million dollar effort to rebuild it. So to introduce our first living landmark of the evening, please welcome His Eminence, Timothy Cardinal Dolan. <laughs> Let me get this. Thanks, Paul. As, um, as one who admires immensely the efforts of the New York Landmarks Conservancy, I am very honored to be with you this evening. And who, as one who loves Ken and Elaine Langone, I'm particularly thrilled to present him with this Living Landmarks Award. Now, 
Let's ask, why would Ken Langone deserve such a distinction? Well, let me offer about a half dozen reasons, okay? For one, he just turned 80, which means when you get to be that age, you know that you've got to take special care of old things, all right? As, as Pope John Paul said, when somebody toasted him as a monument in Rome, he said, when you're over 80, you turn from a monument to a ruin. All right. <laughs> Number two, everybody, Ken Langone is an Italian. And Italians have a deep appreciation for antiquity, culture, and history. They know that the past is to be cherished and conserved, never to be ignored and discarded. Number three, Ken loves his family of origin. If you watch him talk about his and Elaine's parents and grandparents, you will see his eyes moisten and his throat lump. Number four, Ken Langone's a great Catholic, and we Catholics are people of tradition. Five, he's a classic New Yorker. And he knows that this city, which he deeply cherishes, has a splendid architectural, cultural, and historical legacy that deserves protection. And six, he's a successful leader. And he knows that part of the human spirit is that we need both our memories and our dreams. I thank him especially for his heroic leadership in conserving what I think you would all agree with me is one of New York's grandest landmarks, namely St. Patrick's Cathedral. And for that reason, <laughs> and for that reason alone, Ken Langone deserves this award. Ken, congratulations. <laughs>
And we're gonna keep getting better and better if we understand one thing. We are failing miserably in public education in this city. I don't mean to throw a blanket. I am the product, and my wife, my dear wife Elaine, is the product of public education. We started out in a little one-bedroom apartment in Flushing. And God and people like Cardinal Dolan and people like these kids over here and all the people I've been blessed to have with me and everything I've done made sure things went well for us. But it breaks my heart to know that hundreds of thousands of kids in this city will not be able to live the dream that Elaine and I have lived. Hundreds of thousands. We can't just do it with the not-for-profit private schools. You say, what's this guy talking about this tonight for? There are so many powerful, influential people in this room and I'm a salesman, and when I get a chance to make a sale, I'm gonna try every time I can. <laughs> we can't lose these kids. And right now, we are. And it's not political, it's not left and right, Republican and Democrat, it's these poor kids that are being deprived of the chance that many of us have had in this room. Maybe most of us. So thank you for this honor. I can't tell you how much it means to me. I do happen to work in a landmark called the Seagram's Building and the Cardinal drafted me. He and I had a deal, by the way. I don't hope, mind if I tell the story. When he asked me to do this, I said, well, you know, Your Eminence, I have a problem. He said, what's that? I said, I've got a disease that every once in a while when I get upset or particularly disappointed, bad words pop out of my mouth. That's a New York thing, okay? <laughs> He's from St. Louis, but he, by the way, as a very devout Catholic, I say, God, you sent us a real hero, and this guy, in my mind, is the best thing. Okay, I love you. So anyway, I said, uh, I got this problem, and I'm gonna get excited and upset and so forth, and he said, well, what do you want from me? And I said, well, look, is there something like advanced absolution? <laughs> and he went like that, and he said, let's go, and the rest is history. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, we are, that's right. Oh, he was singing a song. Right there. I got my words here. Okay. <laughs> hey, Mom, look at me now. I got to introduce a cardinal. Well, Your Eminence, Ken and Peter and I, uh, we want to serenade you with the song. We know you're, you've, got, you've got a little laryngitis, so we, we, we asked you to sing, but you've got a little laryngitis, so we'll serenade you. Here we go, folks. East side, west side, all around the town. The toxic, the friendly London Bridge is falling down. Boys and girls together, me and Mamie O'Rourke. We trip the light, fantastic. On the sidewalks of New York. Hey. Thank you. No, thank you. Congratulations. Please don't forget those kids. We can't. I never thought I'd say it. You know the best. Who did the best? The Cardinal just said he never thought he would get to sing with Peter Duchin. Um, who said there are no second acts in American lives? Susan L. Solomon is on her fifth or sixth career. A native New Yorker, she's been an attorney, a strategic management consultant, an art 
auction house executive and a media executive. In 2005, she founded the New York Stem Cell Foundation, and since then, she's devoted her incredible energy and expertise to finding cures for the major diseases of the world. The foundation has raised nearly $100 million for research both in its own laboratory and in major medical institutions around the world. Please welcome Susan L. Solomon. Thanks, Paul. Uh, what, a, what an inspiration um, to, uh, to, to follow Ken Langone, who has done so much for so many in this city. Um, I want to thank the New York Con uh, Landmarks Conservancy for this incredible award, and I'm truly humbled to be in the company of my fellow honorees, an extraordinary, extraordinary group of people, each of whom who has made incredible contributions to our city uh, and help make it a great place and a healthy place to work and live. Um, I'm incredibly proud to be in your company this evening. Thank you. Um, as some of you know, uh, I'm married to the architecture critic uh, and now biographer Paul Goldberger. So landmarks and the city have been a, a very big part of daily conversation for several decades. Um, so I'm not a newcomer to the Landmarks Conservancy or for that matter to the fields of uh, innovation and, and preservation, or the passionate belief that we have to do all we can to make the city better and stronger. But the focus of the last 10 years of my life has been on another kind of preservation, which is human health. And that's what led me to co-found the New York Stem Cell Foundation, or NICIF as we call it. At some point in our lives, we, or people we love become patients. That's just the story of life. And our goal is, and our commitment, is to find the most advanced research uh, that we possibly can and get to these cures as quickly as we can. And when NICIF was very young, um, we just marked our, our 10th anniversary, so compared to uh, you know, long-standing institutions in the city, uh, we're just a kid, but in our short history, uh, we've become a world leader in stem cell research uh, with the largest independent stem cell research laboratory in the country, and I am delighted that we've done it in New York City. It's named the New York Stem Cell Foundation for a really good reason, um, and we really feel that making our home in New York will allow us to work as we do with the uh, major medical institutions, uh, NYU and all of the other institutions in New York, uh, alongside them to bring the latest advances in precision medicine to the incredible clinical care that we have. Um, we're really proud of the cutting edge scientific work that we do, and we're especially happy to be able to do it in the city. And to Ken's point, we actually have started a program uh, working with um, children uh, to teach them science, which is something that is hugely lacking uh, in the city schools, and we work with uh, kids in underserved neighborhoods. So I just want to thank you again very much, and um, I'm delighted to, to be here tonight. Brooke and Daniel Nydick are a multi-talented couple who share a passion for business, art, and, thank goodness, philanthropy. Brooke earned accolades for her recent fundraising efforts on behalf of the New Whitney Museum, and if you ain't seen it, folks, get on down there in a hurry. Um, Daniel has been called the godfather of the real estate private equity. But the most important contribute, their most important contribution to New York is the Child Mind Institute, which is working to transform mental health care for children. 
The Institute's programs, education, and outreach have helped thousands of families, and it continues to expand on its good work. Please welcome Brooke and Daniel Nidick. First, we want to thank the Landmark Conservancy for having us as honorees. Um, I keep thinking of a friend of ours who was recently honored, and uh, he said to his wife how humble he felt, and she told him he had a lot to be humble about. <laughs> and this is actually, he, I'm just cribbing off of him. Uh, and looking at the list of honorees tonight, it's, it's easy to feel humble, and, and having said that, you know, we're still having a little bit of a difficulty getting our heads around being living landmarks. And so, uh, being named as living landmarks could be viewed with some misgiving. It means we're getting older, but at least it says we're living. As passionate New Yorkers, tonight's award is thrilling and kind of rare because, for once, we're getting double billing. We're grateful the Conservancy is on a winning streak, preserving great neighborhoods that keep New York unique. We love the Child Mind Institute, but our passion doesn't stop there. It includes the Whitney Prep for Prep and Lincoln Center Theater. The Whitney's chance to build from scratch a major new museum gave Brooke an all-consuming goal a sense of carpe diem. Some donors, she'll admit it, weren't so easily persuaded that Jasper Johns should be installed where beef and veal were traded. But genius does not come cheap. The thrill for this civilian, we topped the Whitney's giant goal, three quarters of a billion. I may be slightly biased as Brooke's husband in expounding when she embraces causes, the results can be astounding. We built the Child Mind Institute, so proud of its success. Architecturally, but a landmark nonetheless. <laughs> 17 million children living here within our borders are struggling with mental health and tough learning disorders. Led by Dr. Harold Koplowitz, we're studying childhood trauma, finding independent research with no money from Big Pharma. When ma raising major funds from friends, we're proud to meet, we're bound, not proud, to meet resistance. Yes, caller ID has become the bane of my existence. <laughs> if someone writes a generous check, Brooke doesn't get specific. They could be thieves and murderers. Still, she thinks they're terrific. Though Dan believes in landmarks, when he bought Rockefeller Center, the landmark laws, as I recall, could influence his temper. Living now in Greenwich Village, we frequently observed we're, we're very grateful, thanks to landmarks, that our view has been preserved. Brooke says our lives are richer for the joy we get from giving. Just don't tell my accountant a guy still has to make a living. But thanks to all the countless friends who've helped us fight the fight. Without your kindness, there's no way at all that we'd be here tonight. A pair of living landmarks, please remind our children. And thank you, thank you to them and to all of you. You helped us to achieve it. Thank you.
I don't know. They all want to sing with Peter Duchin. Ah, New York, the cultural capital of the world. Well, our next honoree, Dr. Susan Weber, added an intimate jewel to our cultural crown by founding the Bard Graduate Center and highlighting the role of decorative arts in our culture. Additionally, the Bard Center Gallery has been hailed for its regular exhibition focusing on the history of decorative arts, design, and material culture. Housed in a landmark townhouse on the Upper West Side, this gem of a gallery is a must stop on the city's cultural circuit. Please welcome Dr. Susan Weber. Thank you, Paul, for your very gracious introduction. A few weeks ago, I received an email from the organizers of tonight's spectacular event, informing me that all honorees consider making unconventional acceptance remarks. The examples they gave included poetry recital, dancing, and a lot of singing. This email struck fear in my heart. As I eventually calmed down, I began to think about what I could possibly do to entertain an audience of such distinguished and talented New Yorkers. Then I remembered that the last time I had seen my grandmother, which was probably some 12 years ago, when she was 104, she said to me two things jokingly. First, what does such a handsome man, referring to me, to well, she was referring to my uh, tennis star boyfriend at the time, see in my youngest granddaughter, and what is that strange career that you have pursued? I grinned at her and brought out my latest accomplishment, a history of design that had taken me and my co-editor some 10 years to prepare. She marveled that someone could actually turn the study of things into a respectable subject, and that I, her granddaughter, had founded an entire institution with the study of things at its core. That was quite a few years ago, and the Bard Graduate Center has since turned 23. I have spent the last two decades devoted to truly unconventional topics. My last exhibition was a study of Swedish wooden toys, which I invite you to come and see at our gallery. It's up to February. And not many grown-ups get to still play with toys. Um, I get to play with dollhouses, rocking horses, and building sets in the work arena. I have also explored Italian and Danish jewelers, historic hats, men's undergarments, and totally underrecognized architects and designers. I get to travel the world, work with world-class collections, engage with other scholars and curators, and teach some of the most engaging graduate students. But how to present what I do and the fun that I have to an audience tonight, and to do it within two minutes. Finally, I decided to do what I do best, I built you a small exhibition for the occasion in the form of a sandwich board. <laughs> the display on my front is made up of 10 books that I have written or edited over the past 23 years. Subjects represented here include the American Circus, British architect and designer E.W. Godwin, and William Kent, designing Georgian Britain. It is a great honor to be recognized as a living landmark and join an incredible list of recipients. Landmark status conveys a certain dignity about growing old 
in a city that I've grown up in, was educated in, founded the Bard Graduate Center in, and continued to make my place of work and my home. The great buildings that have sheltered and influenced us deserve our attention and much needed protection. It is wonderful to be part of an evening to support the New York Landmarks Conservancy and all that it has done in the past 50 years to preserve and revitalize the built environment of our great city. Thank you so much for this award, and if you could all raise your glass, let us toast the 50 years of landmark law in New York City. Thank you. Well, our next introduction is for a very special presenter. Please welcome Broadway legend and living landmark, Joel Gray. Join in the 
Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Joe. Um, I first fell in love with Philip J. Smith and Bob Wangel 30 years ago when I was working in their shows and in their theaters. But 17 years ago, they did something extraordinary. They let me put on my first Broadway Barks adoption event with dogs and cats in their beloved, beloved Schubert Alley, which I believe is a landmark. And they have supported Broadway Barks ever since. Um, they both are committed to the preservation of their beautiful landmark theaters, and these buildings inspired awe when they opened in the early part of the 20th century, and they still inspire awe today. On every level, Phil Smith and Bob Wangle are devoted to preserving the history and traditions of Broadway. In addition to that passion, I feel it is my duty to inform you that Phil and Bob are the powers behind another noble cause. Right now, they are actively drilling into Manhattan bedrock under their theaters to create spacious new ladies' lounges. Tonight, Phil Smith and Robert Wankel are to be declared living landmarks. I can't think of any two people who deserve it more. They are truly precious to New York. And yes, I do use the word precious to describe them. So by the power vested in me by the Landmarks Conservancy, I officially declare that Philip J. Smith and Robert E. Wankel are now and forever, New York Living Landmarks. And here is Bob Wankel. Thank you, Bernadette. We thank the Landmarks Conservancy, and we congratulate our fellow honorees. We could not be more enthusiastic about the support, supporting work that the Conservancy does, guided by the outstanding leadership of Pat Brennan. Uh, Bren. The classic bright lights of Broadway will always shine, thanks to the New York tradition of landmark preservation. At the Schubert Organization, we are committed to making sure that Broadway continues to thrive as one of the great treasures of New York City. And now, speaking from the Schubert table over there, here's Phil Smith.
title, Living Landmarks. Uh, of course, the Broadway community, I think, has always considered you Living Landmarks for all that you and the Schubert organization have done for, for Broadway. Um, not just us as performers, but all of the good you have done uh, for actors, singers, dancers, crew members, uh, musicians, dogs and cats, um, and everybody involved in the Broadway uh, community, and I speak especially uh, as uh, chairman of the board of the Actors Fund, who uh, you were both so so uh, very active with and have done so many incredible things. So I was really ecstatic when I was asked to, to sing a song that were, is kind of dedicated to both of you tonight. It was pretty easy to find that song um, because the first song that came to mind was a song that really captures, I think, the spirit of, uh, of all of us in this business that we call show, this crazy, wacky, frustrating, amazing, wonderful, uh, fulfilling, fascinating, uh, artful business that we are in. So I'm gonna sing that song for y'all. The butcher, the baker, the grocer, the clerk, are secretly unhappy men because the butcher, the baker, the grocer, the clerk get paid for what they do, but no applause. They gladly bid their dreary jobs goodbye for anything theatrical and why. Like show business, like no business. I know you get word before the show has started that your favorite uncle died at dawn. Top of that, your pa and ma have parted, you're broken hearted, but you go on. There's no people like show people, they don't run out of dough. Angels come from everywhere with lots of jack. And when you lose it, there's no attack. Where can you get money that you don't give back? Let's go on with the show. There's no business like show business like no business I know. Traveling through the country is so thrilling. You watch the theater filling, and there's your filling up there in the lights. There's no people like show people. They smile when they are low. Yesterday they told you you would not go far. That night you opened, and there you are. Next day on the dressing room they hung a star.
Well, I get to follow that. Hey, Mom, I got to introduce a cardinal tonight. This has been a terrific evening, everybody. Thanks for a great New York evening. And good night, everybody.